All right, we're back, folks. And we're going to talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick with the Washington football team. What do you think they're going to name that team in the end? I hope they don't come up with another. The Washington, Washington White Skin. That wouldn't go over well. <laughs> <laughs> So, Ryan Fitzpatrick. So, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, quarterback for the Washington football team, uh, was injured. If you look at this film right here, uh, he is tackled and he lands on his knee. He has a hip subluxation. Okay, so hip subluxation differs from hip dislocation. Subluxation means partially comes out of the joint. Okay, so here's a ball and socket. Here's the ball part, here's the socket part. So when a subluxation happens, that ball comes partially out of the hip, okay? It can get stuck there and be perched on there, uh, but most of the time, it'll pop back in, okay? A dislocation, the thing will pop all the way back out, uh, and that usually has to be uh, yeah, put back in, okay, either in the emergency department. Uh, hip dislocations are really, really difficult to get back in. Um, you have to get pushed in anesthesia, uh, because you have to uh, fight against their muscles, which are spasming like crazy because they're in so much pain. Uh, and then imagine uh, if somebody who's a football player who's dislocated a hip, that's going to be pretty damn hard to do. Uh, uh, but yeah, so he didn't dislocate, he subluxed, pushed it, it, it came out, popped back in. So usually the mechanism for these hip subluxations or dislocations occurs when the hip is flexed. In other words, you're 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 uh, you're you're bent at your you're uh, at your. Well, this doesn't move at all, does it? I'm not gonna use that one. Okay. Anyway, what happens is the hip is flexed forward, right? So imagine this is this is my knee now. Okay. Your hip is like this. Most common mechanism is in is it's it's a high energy thing. So the most common uh, way that this happens is a dashboard injury. So people are in a car and may or may they're probably not wearing their seat belt. The car gets hit. They hit the dashboard. Hits the knee pushes that hip backwards, all right? Okay, so if it pushes hard enough, it'll dislocate. If it pushes it, um, it doesn't dislocate, it can sublux, subluxate, and pop back in, right? So uh, if you look at that film, this is actually what happened to Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's tackled, and he lands on the front of his knee. So not just his body weight, but the guy who tackled him on top of him running, transferring all that uh, kinetic energy right into him, right through his knee, back into the back of the hip, that subluxated it, and it popped, popped back in. That's how it happened. So Bo Jackson had a dislocation of his hip, popped back in, but that is a very, very high energy injury, and when you dislocate the hip like that, uh, you can disrupt the blood flow. His hip went on to AVN, um, and he ended up having a hip replacement. I believe it was AVN. I'm pretty sure it was AVN. That's the only reason somebody that young would have a hip replacement. Anyway, so this guy uh, has a subluxation. So let's talk about the hip joint. So this is your pelvis. This is the front of the pelvis. This is the back of the pelvis. This is your hip joint. Okay, it's kind of an angle. It's a ball and socket joint. This is the socket, right? And the ball fits right inside there. The hip has a lot of range of motion. That's why people can do crazy stuff with their, with their, uh, their hips. Um, I was going to make a Thailand joke, but I'm not going to do that. Anyway, hip subluxation happens when that ball inside the socket partially comes out, out, out of the socket. So it could be actually even resting on the tip of that rim of that, uh, of that socket, the acetabulum, right? It's a high energy injury, um, and usually it pop right back in, okay? What does it feel like? When you have a hip subluxation, it feels like you want to pop your hip. It feels like, it just doesn't feel like it's, it's right where it's supposed to be, right? That's a subluxation, okay? Um, uh, now, when that happens, the socket, or the acetabulum, has a rim of cartilage around it called the labrum, okay? That can tear, you can imagine, if you're ripping this thing you know, past it and stretching it, it could tear. Uh, and that could cause problems for people down the line, labral tears. Um, um, it also just hurts, 
right? So, and you've stretched the, uh, the, uh, the muscles that are kind of, and the ligaments that are holding this thing in place. So you gotta give it some rest for things to calm down before you get back to, uh, uh, get back to playing. So he's out, he's on the injured reserve, but I imagine he's gonna be back to playing. We'll have to see how that hip is doing afterwards. Remember we talked about the labral tears. Um, it's a possibility you could damage cartilage depending on how things, uh, how things go. Remember if there's cartilage on that, there's cartilage on that, that, uh, that hip, the femur part, uh, the, the ball part, if it rests on that, um, on that uh, acetabular rim, or if it bangs up against it, you can damage that cartilage. Okay, so there's, 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 there's things that can affect um, that hip even after the, subluxate, the subluxated hip pops back in. What damage was it done? Don't have the information, but those are the things I'd be concerned about. Does he have a labral, labral tear? Uh, does he have um, uh, some damage to the cartilage of the uh, ball, the hip, hip, uh, the hip joint itself? Um, but most likely, he's going to be out for a bit. He'll recover, and he'll be back to playing football again. So, 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 so they, they kind of left it open as far as whether it's going to be a short stint or a long stint on the IR. Do you think that they are, with the MRIs that they've already taken, do you think they already know if there's all that damage and whether it's going to be shorter or longer? Or, or what would you, what would still kind of leave that up in the air? Uh, well, again, like I said, it depends on how, how bad the damage is. So if, the, if they took the MRI, the problem with the MRI is it's going to show damage, but there's going to be a lot of edema, a lot of fluid, uh, uh, inflammation, and so forth. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's some individuals who have labral tears or damage to cartilage, and they're not really in pain. Some people, you know, just do different, just react differently to damage. So it's kind of a wait and see thing, right? He could be back six weeks, could be out for longer than that. Uh, it, it all depends on how he does in this recovery period and how he functions after they get him back to, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, doing some drills and watching him, uh, watching him ambulate, run, um, and uh, do some, uh, uh, some, uh, some actually uh, sport-related activities to see how he's, he was functioning. That's, gonna, that's what's going to determine ultimately how soon he comes back. So, looks like you guys are going to have to get it done with Taylor Heineke. He's pretty good.